show! Hi, I'm Nick, and today we are in front of the bookshelf because I feel like talking about books today. I'm a philosophy and history major in college in Chicago, so that means I read a lot. However, the books behind me are not mostly philosophy or history books. I kind of just actually just want to kind of just show you what books I picked up this past semester. So, let's do that! Movie magic! Okay, so I'm just going to basically just show you some of the books that I picked up this past year. Mr. Carey, did not finish it. Boring, boring turn of the century novel. My mother picked me up world music thing. I have not gone through it yet. <laughs> Survival of the Prettiest, I took an aesthetics class in the fall. It was interesting. She kind of takes in a biological evolutionary look at aesthetics, why we think certain things are beautiful. It was interesting. Some of her like ideas feel old. She went back and updated it. It probably would still be relevant, but just some of the ideas have been disproved since the book was published. This book was published, I want to say, in early 2000s. Oh, wow, 1999. A lot of this stuff is just old. It's interesting, but it's not really, like, a good modern look at a evolutionary aesthetics. The Autobiography of Malcolm X. A really good. Malcolm X's voice is really pronounced. Really interesting kind of insight into a person that's, I want to say, vilified, but not really. Well, of course he was vilified, I mean, by any means necessary. But still, just such a cool read. The Big Tomorrow! I took an American film history class, which is why I had to read Sister Carrie. This is a book basically uh, doing like a socio-political analysis of the 50s and 60s and early 70s via film. Interesting. Class was so bad, I didn't, I didn't get through most of the book. Tell Me a Story. Um, again, for my aesthetics class, we were looking at a different way of uh, interpreting information. And a new-ish way of interpreting information is via narrative. It's interesting because it, it defines like how we see ourselves, how we see ourselves in the future, how we see ourselves in the past, all via uh, a narrative structure. So City of Big Shoulders. This is a cool history of Chicago. I took a uh, Chicago sociology class, so half of the class was history, half of it was contemporary sociology within the city. Interesting, uh, very well done history. It goes until daily junior. Interesting, well done history. Small is beautiful. Economics as, as if people mattered. E.F. Schumacher wrote a bunch of essays about basically green economics. And his main point, more or less, is to talk about a metaphysical restructuring of land and consumption. In other words, how we think about land use and how we think about how we consume. Very, very interesting. And they just, this edition has commentary on the sides like, oh hey, like, he has some good ideas here, and here's how much things have changed in the past 40, 50 years. This was published in 73. Still, a lot of really interesting and cool ideas that are still in play today. Something that changed since he's died is the reemergence and resurgence of nuclear power as a viable alternative for uh, leftist politics. Uh, it's a more or less overview sociology of the Middle East. It's a collection of essays by Asaf Bayat. He does talk about, like, a lot of the ideas going on with the Middle East and how certain Western models aren't applicable and how modifications to certain Western sociological models are. It's a really good overview. This book was published in 210, so 2010, in this uh, contemporary Middle East class I took. Uh, this is the most recent book we had. He definitely did hit some nails on the head about organization over the web and occupying space and that kind of stuff. One of the better assortment of essays that uh, Letters about the Middle East. Writing philosophy papers don't need to say much about this. Pre-Socratics. So the interesting thing about the Pre-Socratics is we don't know anything about them, or what we do know about them, it's either from fragments or from what other people have said they said. We think they thought about is mostly from Aristotle's metaphysics. So this book is a collection of fragments and what we think we thought they think. I can't like speak about the translations to any extent because I can't read ancient Greek. After capitalism. My teacher actually wrote this book, Comrade Schweika, and he basically can proposes a, a socialist market, how it is possible and why it is different and, as a socialist, better than cap capitalism. Some interesting thought experiments to why capitalism should not, should be abandoned and why this system, at least, is a, is a viable alternative. He also talks about how economic systems and political systems change. Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations. I actually have not even started to go into this magnus opus. I feel like I should, just from my interest and stuff, but my god, look at this thing. 
Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud. If you're into like the more academic sense of comics, this is probably the best place to start. Uh, Will Eisner wrote a similar book, but this one's more more recent. It's definitely like a starting place for a lot of modern scholars about comics. His definition of comics is a little bit not inclusive enough. Like he does definitely has this focus on the gutter, which is definitely an important part of comics, but. He even uses an example in his book that the gutter is not a necessary element. John Green's The Fault in Our Stars. I would consider myself a nerd fighter. I did buy the pre-order. Definitely does make you feel all the things. I really liked how John characterized Hazel, how they, how he approached imminent death, how he approached cancer and being sick. Amazing book. The Great Gatsby. Had to read this for my American film class. Read it in high school. Still amazing book. What more can be said about The Great Gatsby? Plato's Symposium. I had to read this for a ancient philosophy class, so pre-Socratics, uh, Plato, and Aristotle. Um, this actually I had to read for my aesthetics class because this is the main dialogue where Plato talks about beauty and eros, or passionate love. It's probably the most approachable of Plato's dialogues besides, I want to say, like the Mino or the Apology because it's just a series of speeches. No one's like interrupting each other or or cross-examining very much. It's really, really good. I actually, after taking my ancient philosophy class, I really liked Plato a lot more. Not because of his philosophy, but just because of how he approaches telling people about the ideas. On that note, ancient philosophy. I read through about half of this. Um, can't really say anything much about it. It's alright. The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay! Um, didn't finish this. <laughs> I actually only got about 200, 300 pages into this before. It was like, ugh. For a comics book class I had took, um, in the fall. Won a Pulitzer, so I guess it's good. <laughs> the King's Men by Robert Penn Warren. I got about a third of the way through this before I gave up. I had to read something else. Had to read it again for my American film class. I like the style. Like, I like how, uh, Warren approaches dialect and the time period. Uh, screening out the past. This is a historiography... Uh, political economic look at early film from advent to about 1930. If you're not into film or film history I wouldn't suggest it though. Milton Friedman's Freedom and Capitalism or Capitalism and Freedom or why everything should be decided by markets and government is a bunch of poopy heads that don't understand anything. Friedman is basically the guy that defined free market capitalism in the 60s and then went through and described how a free market capitalist government would be set up, etc., 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 etc. I think this guy uses freedom more than, than a bald eagle puking up an American flag, which is Milton Friedman does present the current shift in economic thought, like the Reagan revolution is definitely influenced a lot by this guy. Uh, Thatcherism is definitely a direct derivation of this guy's libertarianism, direct descendant. I definitely found myself agreeing with it a lot, but yeah, I don't know. It's alright, I guess. Definitely very much a public intellectual, doesn't do a lot of uh, jargoning. The basic works of Aristotle, you know, instead of the advanced works of Aristotle. Oh my god, did you hear that? Like, I had a hard time reading Aristotle, like, because how we have Aristotle's works collected is that it's not really his works. Someone in the Renaissance time or earlier basically put together his writings into general themes, but they're not really his writings, they're his notes. Amazingly gifted thinker. The Unthinkable Revolution by Kruzman. An interesting historiography breakdown of the Iranian Revolution. Kind of looks at the classical ideas of revolution and examines them in terms of Iran, because Iran is a very different type of revolution. <laughs> The Screenwriter's Bible, I took a screenwriting class. I kept this one because it... Look at it, just... And that's that. Today, because he is with his dad, so... Bye!